The simple Native American drum beat, called the heart beat, also known as the heart of the earth drum beat, which has its origins in the Great Plains of North America, is 10,000 years old. The heartbeat later spread from the Great Plains to much of North America, adopted by many indigenous cultures throughout North America. A Native American heart of the earth drum beat refers to the rhythmic sound produced by Native American drummers, often considered to represent the heartbeat of Mother Earth, signifying a deep connection to the natural world and a powerful spiritual element within the Native cultures. The drumbeat is seen as a pulse that mirrors the life force of the planet itself. The Native American heartbeat is basically a 4-4 four, four beat, which refers to a rhythmic pattern commonly found in most traditional Native American music, typically played on a drum, that follows a 4-4 four, four time signature, meaning there are four beats in each measure with a quarter note getting one beat each. This creates a steady, Consistent rhythm often used in songs associated with the round dance, war dance, social dance, and stomp dance. Most of the indigenous cultures of North America adopted the Great Plains culture heartbeat, but some regions such as the Pacific Northwest, Southwest, Southeast, and Woodland cultures established their own respective heartbeat rhythm. Some songs of the Southwest, Southeast, and Woodland cultures use a deep-sounding drum as their heartbeat, while other cultures in these regions use a percussion sound made from rattles, bells, clapping musical sticks, or log drumming. Four-step war dance. Go, hey, 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 hey. All the various Native American heartbeat rhythms is still based on the 4-4 beat, which pays tribute to both the pulse of the earth and human heartbeat. It is being unearthed by some music historians that some traditional Native American music produced some simple drum beats and rhythms that influenced and provided a base for some early American musicians to incorporate and build around.
hear our own drums or even when I'm at a powwow. It has its own voice, you know, with every step. It's like a natural metronome. It's the heartbeat of our Mother Earth. And I feel like I'm most in tune with that because it's the time where I can self-reflect. But drumming isn't just a cultural flourish. It's the key to indigenous cultural understandings. Everything begins with the heartbeat. Everything begins with the heartbeat. But Shy, where's the innovation? Hang on, man, I'm getting there. We gotta talk about some science stuff first, okay? There's some real scientific evidence that supports why indigenous instrumentation drives well with certain understandings of indigenous identity. Humans are surrounded by sound. I mean, unless you're in a soundproof room like me right now. And what's sound? vibrations. Studies have shown that sound vibrations, which include those from traditional drums, can have positive effects on, okay, bear with me all, hemodynamic, neurological, and musculoskeletal systems in the human body. Huh, that wasn't so bad. If it takes something like hitting some drums to, you know, get you through the day, then I definitely encourage it. And it you know, shows that it does tie us from our traditional into our modern day societies. So it is very healing, um, especially when you go to powwows or if you go to ceremonies on the Pueblos or anywhere else in your tribe and you hear the drum, you know, you hear that natural beat and you feel it in your heart and it's like a pulse. So it's, it's you know, a whole nother sensation and definitely one of my best therapies. Told you that in addition to some of the more traditional sounds you may have heard, indigenous music also permeates dubstep, jazz, and death metal. What if I told you that aspects of traditional indigenous music are the heartbeat of rock and roll? Ah, did that prick up your ears? Well, strap in, partner. I'm Cheyenne Barefoot, your favorite alternative host of Sovereign Innovations. Let me take you on a musical journey to understand how indigenous music and musicians are captivating and innovating the music industry. Redbone sound was also characterized by dramatic drumming, a style developed by Peter DePoe. DePoe described his drumming technique as the King Kong beat. Redbone was signed by Epic Records in 1969, and they released their self-titled debut in 1970. The band's third LP, Message from a Drum, that produced her breakthrough single, The Witch Queen of New Orleans. Now, 
the documentary. Life, Blood, Rhythm, Randy Castillo will detail every phase of his exciting life. Randy was uh, the first person I would have got if he wasn't touring around with Ozzy. He played his drums like, you know, you imagine the Apache Indian ancestors of his rode a horse. He is the first rock and roll Apache drummer. Castillo played the drums for Ozzy Osbourne and Motley Crue. Hello, my name is Randy Castillo, and welcome to Starlix. That's what's going to make the band cook and playing with the band. You've got to have a groove, and that's what rock and roll is all about. So I'll play uh, a straight, basic rock groove, and uh, you should try practicing it, and, and just practice it and practice it and practice it, and uh, so you can develop that feel. It'll come around. You'll know it when you feel it. And uh, So I'll just start off with a basic uh, groove beat. Um, one of the most influential heavy metal drummers. The first time I ever set eyes on Randy Castillo, I could not believe the energy of this drummer. I'm, I'm watching him and if you couldn't take your eyes off Randy, it was just so charismatic. He sucked you in with his energy. Uh, there's a double paradiddle, which is just an extra two beats. It's a right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. And I'll use uh, the, the bass drum as what doing what my right hand was doing. You get like a 6 8 feel, something like this. And uh, there are just endless possibilities. If you can master the rudiments, you just, you'll, you'll be able to master the drums. What I like in a solo is one that has a uh, you know, beginning, a middle, and a peak at the end. Something like a song. It should be a song. And uh, the one I use, uh, like the one I did in the Ultimate Ozzy video, it comes out of the song Secret Loser. And uh, it's just, it goes something like this. And then it leads into uh, the rolls and et cetera. But I'll do a little bit of that, what I would just do in there for you. And it's uh, basically a, a bass drum snare with an open hi-hat uh, pattern. I like to, I like to vary it. And uh, I don't think I ever play it the same way uh, from night to night. It it's always depends on how I feel or what's going, you know, through my head at the time. And uh, from there, I usually go into, uh, I'll do some rolls around the toms, uh, rolls that go something like this. and roll. It's, it's the, the low punch. It's the one that's going to hit you right here. So first of all, I'm going to show you the way I hit the bass drum. I use the toe method as opposed to some people like to flat foot it. 
but you get a lot more power using your toe because you, your whole leg is involved. And that's... That's uh, my technique for it. As far as uh, the double beats, it's, uh, the way I do it is uh, it's based kind of a sliding motion. The first beat is, is uh, the pedal snaps back. And the second is just a solid hit. I just kind of, the first one is a bounce. It just kind of slides in. The, the foot just slides into the pedal. So it's important to practice that until you master it. Just keep trying and trying until you can master that. Because uh, once you do, you'll be able to do stuff like this. And uh, that can be real effective. Uh, I, there's an, other things you can do with the other bass drum. Here's one thing that I do that's uh, real effective for me, especially in a solo type of situation. Uh, you do a, a double on the right kick and a single on the left, and it's like this. Combine it with uh, two beats on the drums, you get something like this. So it can be real effective in a solo situation, especially. And uh, you can use that same pattern, uh, which is a, one I use on a song with Lita Ford called Die For Me Only, and it, it goes like this.